Well, this is looking more like the rocket I wanted to launch in the first place. It just didn't really work on Twitch. So let's finish this up. This is going to be our launch of the first ISRU module to the moon and then return from the moon using this mechanical thing magic called mining excavator. Welcome to What the Math. And here we go, this is the rocket I started building during the Twitch stream and decided to finally finish it up. Uh, one thing I changed is I added these uh, KW rockets uh, booster tanks right here. These are slightly larger using slightly more powerful rockets than what I used on Twitch. But you know what, it's not as important as what I finally brought. I actually finally decided to bring the most important uh, part and the most important unit which is inside of this capsule. It's of course the, uh, I don't know if I can show it to you. I'll just open these up. Here we go. We finally have uh, solar panels. This was the part that I was missing. So what's going to happen is we're going to land this on the moon, use these deployable drills to drill into the moon, and then replenish our uh, tank by using the ISRU module. Holy, these are really long. That's a really long drill you have sir and then we're going to come back back to Kerbin and hopefully Valentina will survive I'm only bringing Valentina because she's the badass and she's awesome and she doesn't need anyone else anyway all right so here we go three two one and launch uh, take off let's uh try to get into stable orbit around Kerbin Ooh, this is a very powerful rocket I really like it and it sounds so good um unfortunately I had to disable the velometric clouds as they kept crashing my game and I'm going to re-enable them when they release a new version for uh, for Kerbal Space Program 1.04 because right now it is unfortunately doesn't it doesn't work very well it's uh, it constantly crashes the game and look at this beautiful horizon we're actually launching at night uh, and it looks absolutely gorgeous this is actually an effect from sc scatterer mod so if you want to have at least some kind of an effect even if you don't have clouds, uh, this will scatter mod will actually allow you to have this beautiful horizon um, effect that you can create. And here comes separation of stage number one. We're now a flying uh, cucumber. I don't know what we are, but we are flying toward the um, apoapsis of about 70 kilometers, and we need to try to circularize at that altitude. Uh, so, so far so good. Um, I've kind of perfected this in the last uh, 10 or so minutes by just including those extra tanks because that's really what I was missing from my original design. And now all we have to do is circularize and then get to the moon. All right, so now that we've actually opened up our top part and reached space, we're just going to circularize here. We still have some fuel left. I think our, our second stage still has 1,120 uh, Delta V. Um, which is quite a lot for us to circularize. And then we're going to pr um, plot a trajectory toward the moon and get an intercept with it. So let's uh, let's wait until we circularize. And look at that beautiful sunrise that Valentina Kerman gets to witness. That's awesome. Very good timing. Very, very good timing. All right, so time to burn, I think. Yes, there we go. Let's start to burn our... Uh, toward our maneuver node, which is right here. We need to burn for about 600 meters per second. And this will give us uh, an orbit of about 80 kilometers above Kerbin. And then we can actually release this stage. Actually, we still, we still have some uh, fuel left in there, but we can release it afterwards. And then we're going to propel ourselves to the moon, which is somewhere in the sky. I don't know where it is. I cannot see it, but it's somewhere out there. So our orbit is 80 and 86, relatively circular, not perfect, but you know what, we don't need it to be perfect. Let's plot a maneuver. Uh, we're going to set moon as target. And there's actually something already on the moon. I think this is my previous attempt at landing something there. I forget what it was, uh, but we don't need to know that. And let's uh, try to plot a course to the moon. All right, that looks like a really nice intercept. We're going to come right behind it, and uh, this will give us a periapsis of 90 kilometers. We'll actually adjust it a little bit. Now, the thing is, there's there is two possible approaches here. One is from uh, behind the moon, and one is from ahead of the moon. 
you would want to approach it from ahead of the moon if you were wanted to basically decrease your overall um your uh, velocity because this this is like a reverse slingshot maneuver that will actually decrease the total velocity but the thing is if you're trying to get into orbit around the moon or land on the moon this will unfortunately require more delta v if you approach it from behind you're kind of catching up with it which will actually mean that uh by the time you get closer to the moon you will need to have much less delta v to land on it so we're going to be approaching it from behind because this is a lot more efficient that way now let's get into maneuver around it i'm also going to enable my uh panels right here because i need to start getting some electrical power because we're almost out actually oh that was really close and once we have um once we approach our nod uh or our node, that is. So once we get to our node, we're going to burn for 858 meters. Half of it will be from this large tank. The other half will be from the remainder tank that's right here. This is our third stage. That's sort of like the transfer stage for getting to the moon. So here comes our um, escape from the orbit around Kerbin. And things get a little bit wobbly here. I think my spaceship is a little bit too wobble happy. Let's release the stage that just ran out of fuel and enable our third stage, which is not as powerful, but it does have quite a lot of Delta V. I believe this has, it has right here, 1563 Delta V, uh, which is enough for us to get to the moon and also to uh, possibly even start landing on the moon as well. And essentially, this is the stage that will be landing on the moon, except for the bottom part that will separate right before the landing. And then we'll use the landing struts uh, which are right here you can probably see them right here uh to uh, to land on the moon and hopefully not flip over i i just realized i think this ship is a little bit too uh too tall and not um broad enough for stability on the moon so it may end up kind of flipping if we land on um, a slanted surface i hope that it's a little bit more flat than usual so that we don't actually flip when we land because if we do flip we will unfortunately lose these panels they will probably end up getting smashed and this is the final burn for Valentina Kerman before she gets into a really, really nice intercept with the moon. So this is what the spaceship looks like from an orbit right above Kerbin. Kerbin is in the background right here. You can see it silhouette right in front of the sun. Uh, and the intercept we get is 16 kilometers above the surface of the moon. I think this is pretty good. We're going to come... Um, right behind it and then right here right at this point we're going to start decelerating so that we can actually land on the bright side of the moon because we need to use these uh, solar panels to to dig some um, materials for us to refuel our tanks all right so let's just wait and see until uh, we get to the moon so goodbye Kerbin hello moon and here comes the moon I've just created another maneuver node uh, that will hopefully help us get really low to the moon surface and then we can actually use a suicide burn to try to land hopefully nobody dies and by nobody i mean valentina kerman she's really happy about the situation right here and let's try to wait until we get to the actual uh periapsis node i think we just need to start burning right here from the periapsis and we'll need to burn for about three minutes so we're going to be decreasing our orbital speed so that way i can actually try to land on the moon now currently you can see the orbital speed is 800 40 meters per second uh this would have been over a thousand if i came from the other side of the moon so this would be not very efficient for us we'll actually be wasting about 300 meters per second delta v but because we're coming from behind it's a lot easier to land this way we also have no more sun so we need to rely on our reserve power because uh, we will not be able to get any more um any more energy until we get to the bright side by uh, by orbiting around the moon at least once and at this point we'll be actually relatively low I, I try to make sure that i don't smack into something and it looks like i'll be i'll be fine until maybe this crater right here so uh, there's uh, several landing areas here but i think we're gonna try to land somewhere on this uh, in this location because it's a little bit higher but it's also a little bit less um less dark less scary and more flat and now we're, we just have to wait until that moment when we have to start doing our suicide burn. Uh, with this particular spaceship, it's actually not very easy because it doesn't have much TWR. Even though this is the moon, it still is very, very large, very bulky, and it uses just this one 
um, Terrier engine, which is not particularly powerful, but nevertheless, we're gonna have to try to do our best. Uh, we're currently 10 kilometers above the surface of the moon. We're moving at the speed of 550 meters per second. This means that it'll take us about four minutes to stop completely. Uh, I'm gonna actually release my gear before I forget. I always forget. G for gear. There we go. And now uh, we're just going to align and. Okay, where should we land? So we're gonna pass by this crater and okay maybe maybe inside i don't think we'll be able to reach this area yeah i think we're gonna be landing inside the crater again but that's okay craters are fun all right so let's land inside the crater uh we're going to engage our engines in a second i think the crater is coming up any minute now oh, oh this is not good we're coming toward the ground we're a little bit too fast i have to actually start burning toward the ground because i can actually see the rocks on the, on the bottom now that is not a good sign i need to start turning my ship this way and blast my engines directly toward the surface because uh i may actually smack into the surface before i'm ready for this uh, we couldn't really slow down laterally fast enough, so I need to start doing a little bit of this. And this will hopefully prevent us from colliding with the moon. Oh, oh, here comes the moon. Hello, moon. You're coming awfully fast toward me. I hope I can stop before I smack into you. Oh, oh. Oh, that is not good. That is really not good. Oh, that is not. Ha, ha, ha. What collision? There was no collision, that was just a dream. Valentina was just imagining what could have happened if things went wrong, right? Yeah, we're just fine. Anyway, so let's try to land on this thing. Alright, we're now very, very gently trying to decelerate laterally while trying not to fall too quickly toward the ground. It's not as easy as it sounds because this engine is not very powerful. There's about a minute before we crash if we were to go uh, laterally. So we're just going to go 45 degrees toward the ground so that we are actually uh, decreasing both lateral and horizontal speed and are not moving toward the moon too fast. The, this is of course the vector of velocity right now and I'm trying to make it so that it's just a little bit above horizon but also not too high and not too low down. Another way of looking at this is you want to make sure that your apoapsis is right behind your ship. It's not in front of your ship because that means you're actually raising altitude and it's not too far behind it because that means that you're falling back a little bit too quickly. So here I'm trying to maintain my apoapsis right behind my ship and it takes me, it's going to take me about 30 seconds before I land. So, okay, and I have 240 delta V left in my lower tank. So I'm just going to use this up. And uh, we're gonna do this by blasting a little bit toward the ground. So I will slow down our horizontal descent. And here, um, the suicide burn tells me that in 150 meters, I need to really start burning. Uh, uh, this is where my suicide burn will officially start. Otherwise, I'm, I'm kind of screwed. And once again, we're a little bit too close to the ground, uh, but this time I think we're fine. We're just going to float right above it, decreasing our lateral speed. This is a bit of a waste of fuel, but uh, this is mostly because I didn't bring a powerful enough engine. If you do bring engines that are more powerful than this, it's a little bit easier to, to initiate and execute a suicide burn. Here, however, I'm, I'm kind of struggling, mostly because these engines are a little bit too weak for me to uh, both lose my lateral velocity and also land at the same time. All right, so while I'm going up a little bit, I'm going to blast my engines laterally, get get or lose as much lateral speed as I can. Here comes my last stage. And that explosion means nothing. That was just a tank exploding. All right, excellent, 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 excellent. So here comes my landing part or landing stage. Uh, I have now decreased my velocity relatively nice. And we can now start our descent. Here's the shadow. I need to start blasting my uh, engine toward my retrograde. And... Here we go, here we go, here we go. 11 meters per second, that's a little bit too fast. 8 meters per second, okay, that's a little bit better. As you can see, this engine is really weak for this type of a setup. Because the uh, ISRU unit is so heavy and so are these other tanks and also the Mark II module, it's a little bit difficult to, for it to actually um, land on the moon um, without really causing too much damage. Or basically without crashing is what I'm trying to say. Because 
here we go. Excellent. Because uh, really, this engine is just too weak. It's not strong enough. Uh, but nevertheless, we've landed successfully. Uh, and Valentina can now... Uh, we still have 1200 Delta V left. And Valentina can now obviously get out, explore a little bit. Um, and we're going to start mining in about a second. As soon as we plant a flag, commemorating the fact that we've landed safely, soundly, on a very flat surface. Um, and we can now uh, begin our first official mission of refueling on another uh, body that is not Kerbin. So this is going to be our Kerbin mission. I sir you, uh, I S R U mission. Uh, I have no imagination right now. Yes, let's refuel is what it's going to say in our, on our flag. And she's super happy about this. I think she's ready to get out. But look at how big this machine is. The ISRU is not something that you can just bring on any spaceship. This is uh, something that you definitely need to think about and plan really carefully before you decide to bring it with you on a mission. So these, these are probably great for really long-term missions where you have several modules uh, that can essentially um, be used for um, for refueling a smaller spaceship so you don't have to bring this with you all the time. Alright, so the way this works is you deploy the drills and okay, here we go. It's a little bit wobbly and then you just start excavating uh, by starting the harvesters. And I just need to w make sure that we have electricity, we do. And then, um, once it fills out my tank, which is going to actually be really, really slow, uh, I can enable my um, ISRU and start conversion to liquid fuel and oxidizer by pressing this button right here. And you'll see that I have now, I'm increasing my liquid fuel and oxidizer really, really slowly. Now, here's the trick for this uh, type of a mission. You can actually use time acceleration, time warp, uh, to make this faster, it actually works all the way to the maximum time warp until your tank is completely full. I'm gonna increase it a little bit. Here we go. Excellent. So this is gonna fill out my tank, and it's also gonna give me a little bit of ore inside this uh, this module. But I don't think I actually need it there. I can possibly just dump it afterwards. And here, as the uh, as the moon turns, we're filling out our tanks with the liquid fuel and oxidizer by using these awesome awesome uh drills okay looks like we are done i'm just going to disable them so stop surface harvester on both sides and retract the drills now here's the thing if your ship is a little bit too tall like mine is right now and it happened to me many times if it's a little bit too tall it can actually at this point flip it can actually flip and it happened to me before but this time I think we're fine. Uh, so make sure that your ship is not too uh, too tall or that you maybe bring some sort of uh, attachment on the bottom so it doesn't flip as much uh, because it will flip otherwise. All right, so we have some 12, uh, 12 kilograms of ore. I'm just going to jettison it because we don't really need it anymore. And also disable my ISRU. Uh, we now have a full tank and we're ready to return back to Kerbin. All right, so we're gonna take off and turn toward the east and blast our engines full ahead until we get the intersection with Kerbin. And uh, basically, we're gonna try to directly enter into the atmosphere of Kerbin. And a three, and two, and one, and let's go. This is takeoff from the moon. Turn toward the east. 45 degrees-ish. Uh, you can retract your gear and let's hope this works. And there is the flag for ISRU mission slowly disappearing into the distance. We'll probably never come back to it ever again, but you never know. This is actually a pretty nice location to land. It's really flat, and because this is a crater, it's uh, it's kind of sheltered from everything here. So there's no mountains, there's nothing else around it. All right, goodbye, Moon. And Valentina Kerman is really happy that she survived and nobody crashed, nobody died. Nothing bad happened. So we're, now we're just going to get into, uh, or basically enough velocity to escape the Moon's gravitational pull and uh, try to return safely to Kerbin. Hopefully the parachutes do not cut on us and hopefully Valentina returns home safely. And look at what we get to witness. We get to witness a beautiful Kerbin rise. Here comes Kerbin from behind the horizon as we're lifting off from the Moon about 18, almost 19 kilometers away from our landing uh, position. Kerbin is coming on the horizon and here we come. Here we go. Let's return back home to Kerbin. 
We're going to try to jump directly into Kerbin atmosphere uh, at uh, maybe altitude of approximately 28 to 30 kilometers so that we can then use our heat shields on our Mark II capsule to slow down and to land safely. Because I'm pretty sure we're going to be losing all of this. None of this will survive when we get to Kerbin because unfortunately the atmosphere will destroy it. But anyway, this is actually a relatively good, very simple, but at the same time, uh, not obviously not perfect, but a relatively effective design to explore the moon's surface. Uh, so this provides you with about 1500 delta V for you to essentially jump across the moon. I, I think there's enough fuel here to um, to move around the moon and land in any location. So I can I actually have enough fuel to land right now and to then refuel again and, uh, you know, take off again and land again so uh, you can co constantly do this over and over as long as there's sunlight because these solar panels will provide the electric charge one thing i would change is maybe bring more drills because really drills are the bottleneck here there's uh, just not enough drilling power and isru can easily uh, convert ore into fuel but unfortunately drills do not provide enough power or enough drilling power that is other than that this is a pretty cool design i'm definitely going to try to change it a little bit maybe uh, make it a little bit more flat so it doesn't flip as much and possibly bring a more powerful engine so we can actually do suicide burns a little bit easier than that well goodbye moon thank you for all the fuel you've provided for us and now it's time for us to return back to kerbin uh we're going to burn or finalize our burn so that we can actually get an intercept with the uh, kerbal atmosphere and then hopefully safely land using the parachutes so I kind of set my perhaps a little bit too low. It's almost 20 kilometers, just below 20 kilometers. I hope this is fine. I hope nobody dies. Uh, and let's see how this goes. We're just going to warp up to here and approach Kerbin really, really fast. At which point we're going to align with the retrograde of our vector and uh, release the last stage and then use our capsule to descend. I also, I'm going to disable the uh, temperature gauges because they make things a little bit worse. All right, so we're approaching Kerbin relatively fast. We're at over three kilometers per second. We can now see the surface. And what I want to do is obviously get into position for um, an atmosphere, uh, atmospheric slowdown. Specifically, we're talking about air braking. So here comes air braking. Uh, I know that all of this will get destroyed anyway, so I'm just going to decouple and release my last stage. All of this is gone. I'm not sure if it's going to survive, probably not. And the thing is, if it explodes, it will actually take my capsule with me, so I need to be careful. But the capsule here has a heat shield on the bottom, and this heat shield will obviously protect us from the atmospheric uh, pressure that's about to occur any second. We're already inside the atmosphere, so the capsule will start wobbling like crazy. Whoa, okay, the last stage just exploded. It's a good thing I wasn't on it. That was probably a good idea for me not to uh, stay with it. Oh, no, it's coming toward me. That is not good. I really hope it doesn't smack into us. No. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, that was a close encounter. That was probably not very safe for me to release it so close to the capsule. Um, yeah. Note to self. Don't ever do that again. Anyway, we're slowing down now. We're at uh, 2.7 kilometers, uh, 26 kilometers above the surface. And I'm pretty sure we'll be fine. Even though we're moving a little bit too fast for comfort. And here's Kerbal Space Center, but I think we're going to actually over jump it a little bit. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're going to pass by it and then probably land in the water somewhere. Possibly near the other uh, airfield by Kerbal Space Center. Uh, we're currently moving at 1.9 kilometers per second at altitude of 18 kilometers and here comes the stage right there it's actually nothing else explored except for the solar panels so i could have maybe capped it but it's a good thing that at least i released myself from safety or to safety from it because i don't know it might have actually killed me all right so we're now in our last descent uh the uh, last the final stage is actually right above us it's overshot us a little bit but nothing else uh, exploded there our crobo space center is over there i um, i overshot it just a little bit uh, and what we're gonna do now in a few seconds when we're moving a little bit slower than this we're going to release parachutes and execute a safe landing into the water hopefully and it just so happens that we're landing right at sunset. So we actually launched ourselves at sunset. We experienced Kerbin rise and now we're landing at sunset. This is a very, very mysterious, very beautiful mission. And uh, you can see the, the final stage is still actually in the air. It's still flying right there. I wonder if I can actually switch to it just to see what it's doing. Oh, look at that. It's falling into the water. Excellent. All right, cool. Uh, so it's about to land in the water. It actually turned out that it wasn't really that dangerous. Um, 
to to be with it. It didn't explode. It survived the uh, the century atmosphere. It, nothing actually exploded, other than the, of course the uh, solar panels. But anyway, we're about to land quite safely in the water, and we're about to land in about three seconds, two seconds, one second. And here comes the final landing. There we go. Excellent. Safe water landing. Let's go for a swim as Valentina Kerman, who returns successfully back to Kerman. We're going to just swim back to Kerbal Space Center and uh, plant our flag there. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. This is What the Math with my final success at the IRSU refuelable mission that I kind of failed during Twitch session, but now have succeeded on YouTube. Anyway, in the next video, we're going to explore something a little bit different, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the science behind all of this stuff. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and give you later, guys. Bye-bye.